Hey guys, I'm back with another video. This time I'm going to be painting and weathering this Machining Krieger AFS Mark II. This is something I received many years ago. A friend uh, gave it to me in a bag of extra parts. <clears throat> it didn't have a pilot, so I sculpted my own. My friend uh, cast it in resin for me. So, I've added texture to some parts, the helmet, shoulders, knee armor. I've used epoxy putty to add dust covers for the joints. And additional details, such as wires and cables. As you can see, it's not glued yet. Add a little detail to the hands. I cut the finger and reposed it slightly. I don't really know who the manufacturer of this kit is. I think it was an old Nitto kit, um, which isn't really around anymore. But I added some well beads to the back, which I will show you in this video. Actually, filmed that before this. So, like I said, this is going to be a painting and weathering video. And I'm also going to make a little base to put it on so it uh, has a nice little display. All right, let's get started. So, for the weld bead on the back, I'm using Abe's Epoxy Sculpt. It's two part. Let's mix equal parts together. Roll it out into little strips and stick it on the back. using simple things like this is my tweezers just using the edge of it to make the uh, the weld bead pattern Once I get the basic pattern down, I'm going to be using lacquer thinner to smooth it out. Still it looks a little rough, but that's okay because in this case I want it to look like a field repair or a modification, so like maybe they didn't have access to the proper tools. So everything's ready for paint. I've put it on skewers. For the primer, I'm going to be using Dianote's Oxide Red Surface Ray Evo. And I'm going to be using Mission Models acrylic paint because I'm going to use hairspray chipping, or I guess this is just chipping fluid. I've never used this technique before, so we'll see how that goes. So 
So another new tool I got is this uh, paint mixer from Wave. So I don't have to mix my paints by hand anymore. It's battery operated. Let's see how it works. It works great. For thinner, I'm using Gaia Brushmaster, which is uh, the equivalent of Mr. Hobby's Mr. Leveling Thinner. This is a bottle of lacquer thinner just basic hardware store stuff, choosing it to clean the tool. So I don't think I'm going to be needing that much primer, so I'm just going to mix in a few drops. And I believe the recommended ratio for Surface or Evo is one part primer in two parts thinner so I'm gonna measure out a few drops with my uh, eye droppers I just want to note that I like using glass droppers because they're much easier to clean than the plastic versions. And I'll just mix it a little by hand. And once it's mixed, we're ready to go. When I used the MIG chipping fluid, I had a problem, and I'll show you. Basically, when I sprayed the mission models on top, this is what happened. Crackles. So I stripped the paint, and I bought some of this hairspray, Tresemme Medium Hold, which is what uh, people used before chipping fluid existed putting a couple light coats on the entire model. Maybe two coats. You don't really want that much and you don't want it too heavy. And this is the first color going down. It's a, I don't know the exact color, but if you guys want to know, you can ask in the comments and I'll reply. But it's kind of a, it's a German yellow World War II armor color. I'm going to be doing a camo pattern here with the yellow and a German green. And this will be the green. I'm just freehanding the uh, camo pattern. I 
If you're wondering what airbrush I'm using, it's the Iwata Revolution CR. I have an Iwata Eclipse as well, but I find I like using the CR more. I don't really know why. So the green looks pretty bright right now, but once all the weathering is done, it's going to dull down a lot. So here is what the camo looks like. And there is no top coat or anything on it because I'm about to do some chipping. This is just a cup of water. I have a regular old brush toothpick for scraping and a paper towel for wiping out the brush. Now, I've never actually done this. I've just watched YouTube videos and this is what I'm doing is uh, just using a damp brush not completely wet and scrubbing. As you can see it's starting to work so I guess the hairspray worked out much better than the uh, chipping fluid, for me at least. I'm trying to be careful not to overdo it because this is my first time doing it. I don't really know how much control I have yet. There are a few parts where you'll see come off uh, a lot of a lot of material comes off but I think in the end it looks okay the overall goal is to have a natural chipping look and I think it worked pretty well thing I noticed when doing this is uh, when I use a toothpick to kind of get it started the chips come off a lot easier it's also nice just to use the toothpick by itself or any other kind of scraping tool just to leave uh, ordinary scratches and not just chips like maybe it's been walking through some brush and some of the rocks or sticks have scraped up the paint and you'll see I'm gonna do a little bit of that on the feet in a minute here turned out pretty good considering it was my first time doing it. Uh, I may have overdone it a little but I think once the weathering is all on there it's gonna look great. So the next step is to paint some of the detail and I'm gonna be using Vallejo acrylic. Detail like the uh, dust covers and wires. Just little bits like that. Use a gray color for the dust covers.
for the exhaust, it already has a rusty look. I'm going to tone it down a little with uh, some dark brown paint. Exhaust on armored vehicles like tanks and things rusts very easily. Actually, they do on cars as well. So because of the heat, any paint that's on it usually gets melted off. So it's usually going to have a rusted look. And I'm also going to paint these pipes on the side in that same rusty brown color just to give it a little contrast. Paint the hoses that are on the arms and legs. One of them is red color again for contrast but the actual kit comes that way and then the rest I'm just painting with a dark gray. It's not quite black, but almost black. These springs are metal and they have actual r real rust on them, which I don't want, so I'm just going to paint those brown. The gun arm, I'm just painting the same black as I used for the cables. Now that everything's painted, I'm going to use Mr. Super Clear Gloss to prepare the kit for decals. Like I mentioned, I got this kit in a parts bag, so it didn't really have any decals, but I have this huge stash of spares from kits I built over the years. I'm just gonna go through them and just kind of find whatever looks cool to me. Decals I ended up using all came from old tank kits, the numbers and uh, some of the other markings as well. I'm using Microsol to keep it in place. Now that the decals are on, they don't match the chipping, so I'm going to have to scrape those up a little. I'm going to use a hobby knife and just physically scrape it off. Looks good and I will do the same for the rest of the decals. And once that's all done, I'm going to put a gloss coat on to protect the decals for enamel washes. I'll pour a little enamel thinner to a cup for my brush. I'm just going to slather it on in any space that has uh, raised or recessed details. You don't really
really have to be that precise with this step because you're going to wipe it all off anyway. For the vents on the back, I'm using Tamiya Panoline Accent Color Black. And now that the wash is dry, I'm going to remove the excess with enamel thinner. Note that when I'm swiping with the cotton swab, I'm trying to stick with one direction. Generally going from the top and swiping downward. This will simulate rain streaks. For the parts I've removed too much, I'm going to use Tamiya brown accent color. Just because it's convenient and has a brush built in. going to use this little sponge with some Vallejo paint to add a little texture to the rust, the rusted exhaust. Just a little bit of orange. You have to be careful not to overdo it. It's kind of like dry brushing where you remove most of the paint from the sponge. For the exhaust itself, I'm going to use black smoke pigment just to blend in a little area on the back there. And I will fix that in place with pigment fixer dropped on and I'm removing the excess with a paper towel. Now I'm using a little bit of dark wash in areas that may have some fuel spills or oil leaks. Anything that looks like fluids may have come out. So now I'm going to use the lighter wash again, the Modern Vehicles wash, to make some speckling. Just add a little texture to the lower half of the model. Almost like it's been splashing through mud puddles or, you know, stuff you'd find on the battlefield. And now it's time to paint the figure. I'm not going to go into this in detail because there are a lot better YouTube videos about this than I can make. But I'm going to start with the basic skin tones just to get a, uh, a base coat down. 
I'm using various Vallejo paints. Um, I have some from their game color line and some from their mecha color line and normal model line as well. They all work the same. They're all compatible, so I'm gonna start with, like I said, the base coat for the skin tone and the helmet. That base coat was a little light, so I'm going in with that darker flesh tone. Before I start skin tones, I like to paint the eyes in, and I'm using an off-white, and I'm just use, using a brown for the iris. After that, it's just touching up around the edges, and then I'm going to use a darker tone to paint in the shading, anything that would fall into shadow. From here, I'm just going to go back and forth between the shading and the base tone, wherever I think it needs it. I'm satisfied with that I'll add a lighter tone and again I'll just go back and forth between that and the base tones blending as much as possible Because Vallejo dries so quickly, sometimes I like to use a dry brush at the same time to kind of blend. Now I'm going to stain the base. Normally you would use a oil-based stain. I like to stain with acrylic just because it's faster. You don't have to wait for it to dry for a few days. Just paint it on the brown color of your choice or any other color you'd want to use. While it's still wet, wipe as much as you can off with a paper towel. There you go, wood stain. I actually added a darker brown to it because I wasn't happy with the color. And once that's dry, I'm going to spray it with Mr. Super Clear Gloss to give it a nice glossy surface. A few hours later, it's nice and shiny and ready for the groundwork. This is a bag of sand that I got from the beach. One time I went and just had a Ziploc in my pocket and grabbed a bunch. I live in Southern California, so it's easy. This is dirt from the back patio of an apartment I lived in once. We had a little planter section, little garden. I just grabbed a bunch of dirt. I'm gonna use Elmer's glue to stick it on.
of the little rocks. I'm just putting them in random spots. To hold the rocks in place, I've made a little mixture of water and glue. I'm just eye dropping it on. I'm removing the excess with a brush. So the glue has taken all the color out of the beach sand, which is fine because I have paint. I'm going to use Vallejo paint again to paint the sand. I'm going to start with a dark yellow color to kind of fill in as a base coat. Next I'm using a lighter color and this is Iraqi sand. Just, just give it a little highlights. You don't want to cover too much but you, you still want some of that base color to show through. And now I'm going to do some dry brushing with off-white. Now I want the model to match the surface, so I'm going to add some make pigments to the feet, the lower half of the legs. This is the brick dust color. This is a regular number two pencil. It's just all black wood, fancy. I'm gonna add a little metallic sheen to some of the edges. Gives it a little worn metal look when it hits the light just right. gloss varnish for those areas where it had spills. It's going to make it pop a little. I didn't want the base to be all sand and rocks, so I'm going to add some of this grass tufts. This is Army Painter brand, but a lot of other brands make it. I think Ammo makes some. Uh, I'm sure it's easy to find in your hobby shops, but I'm just going to super glue it on in random spots. Normally I would paint these, but this brown color actually works pretty well for the desert environment. So all that's left is to mount him to the base and I'm going to pin him with wire. I'm going to drill two holes in his right foot because it's going to be flat on the ground. Now we'll super glue two pieces of wire into those holes. And I'm using my hobby knife to mark the spot where those wires touch the ground because I'll have to drill some holes into the base as well. Once 
once everything looks good, I'm just going to use regular white glue to mount them to the base. That way, if I ever need to remove them for any reason, I can just get it wet and it'll come off pretty easily. And there he is, the AFS Mark II, fully painted and weathered. My first kit of 2021. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end, thanks a lot. I'm going to put a link to Still's photo gallery in the description, so please look for that. And that's all for today. I have another video coming up where I'm going to be building another new-ish kit, so look out for that as well. And again, thanks for watching.